All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section, complex numbers. Pretty awesome stuff here. If you haven't done so already, at some point you're probably saying, hey, why are we doing this? These numbers are imaginary. They don't even exist. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be, it's going to cross your mind at some point. So there are some cool things you can do with complex numbers. Um, here's one of them. This is like the, called the Mandelbrot set over here. And this is a special uh, a figure that's pretty amazing if you think about it. We're not going to dive too deep into it. Maybe later on when we talk about recursive patterns. But if you take a complex number, which we're going to talk about this section, and you take it and do some operation to it. Maybe you square it and add it to the original, and you get a complex number, and you plot the point. Uh, it's one of these dots on the graph. You make these little dots, and then you put that number back in. Boom, you square, add that to your previous term, and you keep adding it. It keeps making these different dots all over the place, and these little dots make these little fractals, which are these shapes repeated forever and ever and ever and ever in here. So what you end up with are these crazy little tiny shapes inside this area. So like, Here's the inside this area it goes forever and ever and ever these little tiny shapes. So what's crazy is in this finite area, if you tried to calculate the perimeter of all this, it would be an infinite perimeter because these little shapes go on forever and ever and ever. But I know they're trapped in this box, so the perimeter is infinite while the area is finite. Wow, chew on that for a while. Really for us, they just make some pretty cool pictures, uh, some pretty neat pictures of these things. So. Let's go ahead and do some complex numbers. What we really need for seriousness is we just are going to learn how to do operations of them. And it's just like doing radicals or some of the other things we've looked at. Hopefully we see the connection there of how to add, subtract, and multiply, divide these things for now. So quick review. Last section, we were getting pretty awesome at solving these. I almost said pretty boss at solving these. Holy cow. That's ridiculous. Um, bring your four to both sides and square root both sides. So when we solve these things, we were getting things plus or minus two, and that's old school. We've been doing that forever. Then I kind of mixed it up and said, well, what happens if you subtract four from both sides? You get a negative, and you have to square root that negative. Remember, this was the whole idea of we would get plus or minus two i. Two i times two i is that negative four. And then we have the end a little bit here. If I subtracted four from the both sides to get negative four, went ahead and had to square root it there. So you square root both sides there. You ended up with this x plus two, plus or minus uh, two i there. And then one more step, we had to up the end here, we had to subtract two from both sides. So we had three different types of numbers here that we were working with last section. Ooh, that's a terrible plus or minus. Let me try that again. <laughs> what is this? Negative two plus or minus two i. So the first one we know, this is a real number. We've been doing that forever. It's just plain old real. This guy is imaginary number right here because it has the i. So what is this last number here? We didn't really address it. We just talked about real and imaginary last time. Now we're going to address it. This type of number right here is a complex number. Complex number. Why is it complex? Well, it's part real. It's part imaginary. Huh, imagine that. So here's the real part, the negative 2, and here's the imaginary part, the 2i. So it's a complex number. I always think of this thing like this unicorn or uh, now you Pegasus maybe. It's part real. Like I can see the horse part in there. Like there's the horse. Yay. Uh, that's real, so there, this part of him is real. And then you got the wings, you know, horses don't have wings. And you got the unicorn, imaginary. So he's a complex, mystical creature. I don't know what he is, but here's, uh, it's kind of like a complex number. Complex numbers, what I want you to remember, is they take the general form of A plus B I, where A is the real part, so A is the real number, and B is the imaginary number right there. So. Complex numbers, A plus B, I, that's the standard form. That's what we're going to write them in. And if we take about the, st the set of numbers, like real numbers, you know, are like, like counting numbers 2 and 4 and integers like negative 7 and some decimals, uh, some rational numbers like 7.5 or 9 halves or some irrational numbers like pi. These are all the real numbers. Same thing. We have imaginary numbers. We can have 2i. We can have irrational pi i. We can have integers negative 7i. So the same thing. We can have 7.5i. Imaginary. So where they meet in the middle here is the complex numbers, and we're going to talk more about comp. I'm sorry, different types of numbers next section. But the complex number is the mixture of the two. So we got a little Venn diagram. Love Venn diagrams uh, of mixing those two together. Awesome. So that's a kind of a long definition. Let's go ahead and start working with these, and hopefully you'll see how they relate to kind of other things we've worked with in the past here. So if I want to add these together, oh, I threw some fractals in here. These. This is a famous one. This is Sierpinski's triangle. You see these triangles repeat and repeat forever and ever. And if you kind of delve in there, it's just triangles forever. So cool. Uh, sorry. But so if I want to add these together, you just add your real part. So I can see there's a real part. There's a real part. So I have 11 of the real. Then you do your imaginary numbers. Negative 3 plus 9 is what? 6i. So add the reals. Add the imaginary. Easy peasy. I love it. 
Here's another example that I think you got to write down. I don't think I had in your notes just to make sure you're really watching this great video. There it is right there. Uh, here's a crazy fractal with hands. And look at that. That can just keep going forever and ever. That's pretty trippy. That's wild. Um, so subtraction, just remember you're subtracting each part from this. So it's 5 minus 3. So uh, it's 5 minus 3. And then it's negative 2i minus 7. So negative minus 7, you're getting more negative. It's minus 9i. If you want to go ahead and distribute that negative and say plus, and then make this minus minus, I'm totally cool with that. Maybe that's an easier way to see it. Uh, but the parentheses are just here to show that that is a complex number. Really, they're just showing it. They're not like here. I didn't even need the parentheses. Awesome. Very nice. So we can subtract it. Be careful with negative. And that's probably the coolest fractal you'll see today. I'm guessing of all the haircuts, that's the coolest one you'll see. Look at this hair's fractal in there. Pretty awesome. What if it's just a uh, imaginary to a complex? So I've got an imaginary number here, a complex number here. Just go ahead and do the imaginary parts. It's totally cool. So I've got the 5. I got 4i minus 12. That's going to be minus 8i. So uh, it's kind of like adding like terms. It's just adding real parts and imaginary parts. Awesome. Add, subtract. Pretty great. So multiplication. We actually did this pretty much last time. We're going to up the ante a little bit. So can I distribute? Sure, you can distribute. Go ahead. So I can do real number to real number. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 5i? Sure, 20i. No problem. So I can go ahead and multiply them out. No issues here. Uh, 2i times 3 is what? 6i? You may have to write this one down. I think I left that one off. Uh, so you may need to pause it real quick. And then 2i plus 7i. What happens here? Well, I've got 14. And then i times i is i squared. Just be careful, we're always going to simplify this. So the key to the last section was, what is i squared? That's the whole reason all this we have all this, really, is that negative 1. So really, it's 14 times negative 1. And what do we got to put in standard form? So the real number comes first, so it's negative 14 plus 6i. So we are going to be kind of specific. Make sure you put in a plus bi, or real plus imaginary. Awesome. So the multiplication you can distribute, and we can double distribute. Or some of you guys maybe learned FOIL. So this is important because this we're going to do a lot with this idea. So 3 times 3 is 9. If I distribute to the next one, I've got 3 times 7i. So what is that, 21i? Boom. Then I got negative 2i times 3, negative 6i. And then negative 2i times 7, negative 14i squared. And this is definitely going to clean up here. So let's clean this up. The 9 is just 9, but I can combine like terms here. 21i minus 6i is 15i. And then that 14i squared is really, remember that i squared is negative 1. So what's going to happen here? I got negative and negative is a positive. So that's going to be plus 14. So that'll give me 23 when I add them. And then 15i right here. Boom, there it is. So it's going to be nice and neat like this. All right, so if we can multiply, we can unmultiply. Or we can factor. We're going to factor these things. Or think of it as division. So uh, this is the kind of the original problem from the beginning. x squared minus 4, you could have, remember we were solving them, but you can also factor these. This is a special case difference of squares. So remember, this is x plus 2 x minus 2. The reason being, when I multiply this all out, those middle terms cancel and I get back to this. So when I look at this, x squared plus 4, can I do this? Well, in the past, it's no. It had to be subtraction. But with imaginary numbers, check it out. It actually works. You have x plus what? x plus 2i, x minus 2i right there. If you don't believe me, we can multiply this out and see what happens. x times x is the x squared. You're going to get minus 2xi. That's kind of weird from those, and then plus 2xi, totally cool. And then 2i times 2i is minus 4i squared. So what happens is these middle terms cancel just like over here, and then you've got i squared is negative one, which gives you that plus four. Isn't that super cool? So you can actually now factor these. They have imaginary factors. Crazy, so if I look at this, normally in the past I say, oh, I can't do that, it's got a plus, but now I can. It's gonna be x plus 6i, x minus 6i. Super cool, now you can factor some special cases. All right, let's talk division here. So um, factoring is division, but here's another division. When I have uh, a complex number over a real number or any uh, just a single term on the bottom, I can split this fraction. So you're totally cool with saying, oh, yeah, split this into two parts. It's 4 thirds minus 3i over 3. And why that's good sometimes is things will start to reduce here. Not every time, but 4 thirds doesn't reduce, but you can cancel the 3 over the 3 and get minus i. So I can reduce this. This is a nicer way of looking at it, splitting this fraction up. So how does that happen? Well, it's going to happen in these problems here. Like So solving equations just like last time, if I divide, I'm going to have what? Take the square root. I'm sorry. Square root of both sides, you get 2x plus 1. What is this? This will be plus or minus 3i. So I've got that imaginary part. So now let's solve for x here. So I'm going to minus 1 from both sides. So I get 2x minus 1 plus or minus 3i. And then the finale here, I got to divide by 2. 
which means I gotta divide everybody over here by two. So you can do it individually or one term, but I like to do it individually. So really, what is our answer here? We've got negative one half plus or minus three halves i. That is pretty crazy. What else is crazy? Bean's head, that's a fractal down here that goes forever and ever and ever. Infinite bean heads right there. That's pretty weird. All right, let's do it again with this bad boy right here. So I wanna get uh, the, the squared part by itself. So if you subtract your one from both sides, What's going to happen here? I get 3y minus 1. That whole thing is squared. Gives me a negative 27 on this side. Now I'm stuck. I can't add or subtract anything else. So what am I going to do? Square root both sides. Square root both sides. So this is really 3y minus 1. So what's the square root of this thing? Well, it's really, I can just pull that i out. It's all I can do right here. 27, I don't know it. So it's going to look like this. Now what can I do to get y by itself? Sure, let's just plus 1 to both sides. Plus 1. Oh my goodness, I forgot the plus or minus. Dang it. Always got to do the plus or minus. Anytime you draw that in there, it's plus or minus. So good, that was a good catch right there. So I've got uh, bring down 3y equals 1 plus or minus i radical 27. And then the last step here is what we're going to say. Let's get y by itself. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. So these cancel. And I'm left with y equals 1 third plus or minus i radical 27 over 3. Check it out, I-27 reduces though, doesn't it? Holy cow, I can break that down into what? Uh, that breaks down to nine times three, so that is three I radical three. So 27 breaks down, so you gotta break it down. And why is that important? Well, check it out, when I break it down, these cancel. So the final answer here will be Y equals one third plus or minus I radical three. Holy cow, there it is right there. Break it all the way down. Very nice. Okay, the last thing we're going to do with this is we're kind of going to get to these conjugates. This one's not really conjugate. It's this bad boy over here is the conjugate. Let's start with this guy right here, though. So if I have this fraction, uh, it's just like radicals. Remember when we, we old school, you would have something like 3 over radical 2, and you're like, oh, I really don't like square roots in the bottom. So you'd multiply by the square root in the bottom because that would cancel the square root in the bottom, right? Square root 2 times square root 2 is 2, and then on top you would just have that mess. So we would say, yeah, don't leave squares in the bottom. Same thing, we don't want i in the bottom. So to get rid of i, how do you get rid of i? Well, you just times it by i. But whatever you do to the bottom, be careful, you gotta do it to the top. So what's gonna happen here? 2i times i, 2i squared. And you're thinking, well, i didn't disappear. Well, yeah, it really did, because what is i squared? It is negative one. So really on bottom, we're looking at something like negative two. So that is the bottom. Awesome, how about the top? Well, you have to go ahead, whatever you do to the bottom, do it to the top. So you have to distribute this i to both of these bad boys. So really, you're going to get, what, 4i minus 3i squared. And again, what is that i squared? You're going to get 4i minus 3 times negative 1. So minus 3 times negative 1 is plus, so it'll be a 3. And then you've got that plus 4i. So we do put the real number first, 3 plus 4i over negative 2. And it's color code. Look at that little blue and red there. Oh, I should have used green and red for Christmas. My bad if you're here by Christmas. Hopefully you're here by then. Uh, all right, so what does this mean for conjugates? Well, this is uh, the same as the square roots. So we do the square roots. What do we do to get rid of this i? Now I just, I'm gonna keep it the same, but what am I gonna do? I'm gonna change the sign. So I'm changing the sign. Whatever you do to the bottom, do it to the top. So now we gotta multiply out the bottom. Well, check it out. Do you recognize what this is? This is one of those difference of squares. This is one of those factoring things, which is super cool. So if I go three times three, I get nine. What's gonna happen here? Three times 2i will give me my 6i. 2 times 3i will give me my 6i. And what's going to happen? Well, yeah, they cancel. That's the whole point. They're supposed to cancel. So this will be 2i times 2i, which is negative 4i squared. So what's cool is this will always happen. This is why we're doing it. These cancel. It's a difference of squares. This is really negative 1 here. So this turns into what? Plus 4. So it's really 9 plus 4. So the bottom of this thing is a nice, friendly 13. There you go. Is the top that friendly? No way. The top's going to be a hot mess, I think, here. Let's do it. So on top, we have to do the double distribute. So I'm looking at, what, 12. Then I go 4 times the last one, and I've got negative 8i. Not a different square, so these are not going to cancel. That's going to be negative 9i, 3 times 3. And then negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6i squared. So let's clean this up a little bit here. So I'm going to have, on top, this becomes negative 1. So that'll be negative 6, so 12. Uh, should I write that step? Yeah, let's write that in there. That is really 6 times negative 1 for this i squared. So what does that mean? That'll be 12 minus 6 is 6, and then minus 18 minus 9 minus 17i. All of that is over 13. That is the simplified version. So we took this bad boy here, turned it into this. Now there's no i in the bottom. Now it's easier to work with. 
And I got another fractal. almost forgot it. Look at this. That's a real-life uh, Broca flower. Real-life fractal in nature. Super cool. Chew on that for a while. Literally chew on that. All right, here are four for you to try, and then I'm going to post the answers up uh, and see how you did. I kind of just randomly picked a couple to see if you're good to go, and then... Uh, Okay, so pause it, try these bad boys, we'll see how you do. Good luck. All right, here we go. The first one, just be careful of that negative sign. Make sure you really subtracted that, and you're good to go and got this right here. This one here has got a little bit of everything. If you've got this, you are a rock star, man. You're good to go. Four-thirds plus or minus I radical five. Check out the work in there. Uh, just double distribute. Make sure you're good on that one. And then the finale, it's a lot. You've got everything. you got to do that double distribute. Multiply by the cons, you get 36 minus 3i over 29. Boom, that is it. Good luck with these practices. I hope it goes well. Good luck on the metric. Peace out.